Welcome back to Real Shit, where we like to talk real shit all day, every day, all for the love of movies. I am Joe. Before I get into it, please like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications. Any little bit of feedback or support would be greatly appreciated. Without further ado, I'm going to get right into it. And today I'm going to be talking about a story that came out recently. Actually, it's been within the past five days or so, so I'm a little bit late jumping on it, but... It's just something that I thought I should cover, considering it's something I talk about a lot on this channel, to be quite honest. And basically, there were excerpts from an interview that Seth Rogen had. And basically, he called Marvel um, $200 million comedies. Now, if you just read the headline, you can take that many different ways, to be quite honest. Of course, a lot of people took it a certain way, and I'll get into that in a second. But first of all, I want to talk about his actual comments. So basically what he was saying was, is that he has a producing partner, Evan Goldberg, and they were talking, and they talk about this a lot, and basically we're, it was insinuating that because Marvel tends to shy into the comedy territory a little bit more, they're more leaning into that as far as their content goes, that makes them direct competition for what they do. And it's very hard to compete against that because they have the budget and they have the people the people backing it. And it's just him and Evan Goldberg are, are, are on their own, essentially. So it's just basically he was trying to draw a comparison and just show, I guess, basically his feelings in that Marvel is basically competition for him as far as comedies go. Like, that was the gist of it. And he actually kind of... He doesn't kind of. He actually like supports Marvel in the in the interview. He actually says like, basically, and not so many words, but he he gives them props for what they do. But of course, again, people are just reacting. So, what I'm gonna say is, you could take this a couple different ways, and I have a couple different thoughts on this. My first thought would be that the people who are automatically attacking Seth Rogen. See, we live in a society now where they, people just want to react to things. They don't actually want to think. They don't want to read something. They don't want to actually do the research and figure out exactly what they're talking about. They want to attack people's opinions. They want to discredit people because of their opinions. Like, you can't say anything bad about Marvel, ever. Like, even if it's a minor criticism, people will come after you. People will attack you. Because, for some reason, it's like this protected brand, and you're not allowed to criticize it. And I think that is just... It's not good for entertainment. It's not good for cinema. It's not good for anything. It's because nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing is above criticism. There are movies that I swear by that I could still watch them and find things in them to criticize to 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 nitpick that's just the way it is like nothing it's very rare to find a film or a movie that is perfect it happens on occasion but it's it's not a common thing but if you would listen to anyone who steadfastly supports the mcu you would think that everything they do is perfect and that's just not the case like I'm, I, I hate to break it to you i know a lot of people are afraid to give actual opinions on Marvel for the fear of backlash. I'm not one of those people. And it's just like, these movies aren't perfect to me. I've told everyone many times my feelings on Marvel, and this is why I don't really cover them that much, because like, I don't feel the need to cover something I really don't care that much about. But in this particular instance, it goes back to what I talk about quite frequently, and that's just that nothing, nothing is above criticism. And especially not Marvel, because there are a lot of flaws in these movies. And regardless of whether people want to pay attention to them or just ignore them, like, that's your personal preference. But that's another thing I want to get into is, like, the whole subjective argument. Like, yes, entertainment is subjective, 100%. Some things work for people that don't work for others and vice versa. Like, that's part of it. That's why you're able to like movies that aren't very good. That's why we have things like Guilty Pleasures, where it's like... We recognize that something's not good, but we still find it entertaining. We watch it anyway. Like, that's that's a thing, and I totally 100% am on board with that. It's a, the subjective opinion. But there are also instances where quality is just fact. Like, it, it, you can't use the, the, the term subjective to to kind of avoid criticism. And I feel like people use that quite a bit. Like, sometimes when something's good, it's just good. Like, I can say... 
for instance, that Breaking Bad is a great show, but I don't necessarily like it. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, you can give appreciation to it for being well made, but you can also not necessarily like the content. So people, again, and I've talked about this before, you have to find a middle ground. Like, it's you have to look past your fandom sometimes and actually be able to look at something from a critical standpoint and you'll see a completely different thing i guess is basically what i'm trying to say so this whole idea of attacking seth rogan because he didn't even necessarily say anything bad about marvel that's the crazy part is like people just took a headline and ran with it like i don't think people actually read the article because he wasn't necessarily dissing marvel he was just saying that's his competition and it's difficult to compete against them and that kind of brings me to my next point in that something i talk about all the time is that because marvel dominates the entertainment market or the at least the cinema market and because they flood the market with all their very i guess comedic content or whatever content it is that they produce now people are programmed and i'm talking about the consumer the consumers are programmed to believe that's the only way that you can do things and that they have to be 100 percent dedicated to marvel and everything else is not worth their time and yes, people do get programmed in that aspect. Like Consumers are very easily influenced by what they are told to like. And I'm not saying anyone necessarily told you to like Marvel. It's just it happens so often. Like, for instance, Endgame. Like, that made the amount of money it made because of the name Marvel being attached to it. It has nothing to do with the quality of the movie. It's just people were invested for so long. And they wanted to see the end of that story. So they went to Endgame, and that's why it was the success that it was. If you actually look at it from a critical standpoint, it's not that good of a movie. And I'm just being honest. I mean, I know a lot of people aren't going to agree with that, but that's just how I look at it. Like, I watched the movie. I was like, there are certain aspects of it that I thought were good. Other aspects of it that I thought were ridiculous and completely forgettable. And that's how you, that's how you break down a movie. Like, that's, that's what critics do if you if you try to fancy yourself as a movie critic or if you go on social media and there's these kids out there they just go on social media and they constantly have to put their opinions in and they they want their opinion to be known it, no matter how ridiculous or wrong it might be and yes there are wrong opinions and i hate to break it to you but there are really like i've said before there aren't wrong opinions i think there actually are wrong opinions because a lot of times people are putting their personal feelings into it and not looking at it objectively and that to me creates a wrong opinion it, and if you can't understand what I'm saying in that aspect then I can't really help you but you get like these people that go on social media and like the Martin Scorsese situation or now the Seth Rogen situation and you get their Twitter fingers going like little kids do and basically they go on there and they because someone has an opinion about Marvel that doesn't match theirs then they feel the need to bring that person down. They feel the need to talk about Seth Rogen and how his they don't like his movies or how Martin Scorsese in the quality of his movies. Like this is what they do in order to combat opinions that don't match their own. And I think that is unhealthy to be quite honest. It's unhealthy as a consumer, it's unhealthy for the industry because there's going to come a point where studios are only going to think that oh, all we want is the Marvel mold of everything. Like, everything has to be done exactly like Marvel. And DC has run into this problem where they try to do things exactly like... Or they switched their plan up and then attempted to do things like Marvel, and the quality suffered because of it. And that's that's the issue that we're going to run into constantly here. Like, not everything has to be done exactly like Marvel does it. Like, there's a thing called creativity, and there's a thing called thinking outside the box, and that's what creates great cinema that's what creates memorable cinema that's what creates movies that i want to go back and watch again if you're following a formula and just checking all these boxes that are pre-laid out that's uninspiring to me that's that's where we're at right now so there's a major issue i think with marvel within the past few years kind of trying to dominate the market and it's like it's just programmed people to think a certain type of way and think everything had to be done that way and that's just not the case like we need to let people be creative we need to let people take properties and do what they can with them and 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 try to put a fresh spin on them and, and put their own stamp on the property like i don't want to see 
a formula. Like, I want studios to allow filmmakers to come in and put their own stamp on these things. And that just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen at Disney. It doesn't happen at Marvel. Like, you have to follow their plan. Otherwise, they get rid of you. And there's many instances of when that happens. Edgar Wright with Ant-Man, for instance. Or, or um, yeah, whatever the case may be. Even in Star Wars, Colin Trevorrow. He was fired from The Rise of Skywalker. Well, it wasn't called The Rise of Skywalker at that time. But Episode Nine, he had an idea of what he wanted that to be. They had a different idea. They didn't want him to execute his plan and wouldn't go along with what he wanted, so they got rid of him. That's that's where we're at right now. Like you have to go it's studio mandated rather than director or writer mandated. Like the director and the writer should be in charge of the content. They're the creative ones, they're the ones who have the ideas to push a certain idea in a certain direction and make memorable storytelling. The studio is simply should just be there to distribute the movie. They got to okay it, okay certain things, of course, because they're putting their money into it. But they're purely, in my opinion, a distribution. That like that's their main purpose, and of course, production. They they got to supply the money and all that, and they should have some input into the creative process, maybe. But when you have competent filmmakers who have great ideas, in my opinion, you just need to let them go. And that's kind of where I'm at now, as far as this whole Marvel. Um, topic goes and I just find it funny that every time anyone says anything even remotely that people disagree with that they attack that person and it's like you're allowed to not like Marvel you're allowed to have an opinion on Marvel you're allowed to like Marvel it, there's no like it's not black and white there's areas of gray like not everyone has to feel the same way not everyone has to feel exactly the way you do like so that's what we I think we need to get away from and again, Seth Rogen wasn't even necessarily saying anything negative about Marvel. It's just people read a headline and ran with it. And that's that's the that's the society we live in now. Like that's the culture. Like that's what people do. They just go off emotions and they don't they ignore facts. They ignore they ignore facts and they ignore what's actually going on. They ignore they don't try to find out more about the situation. They don't try to dig a little deeper. It's just they take everything at face value and they just run with it. So that's my opinion on this. Um let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I'm sure there's gonna be people who disagree, but such is life. I mean I'm not here to make everyone agree with me and I don't expect to agree with everything you say. So yes, let's open a discussion down below. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time right here on Real Shift. Thanks for watching. Peace out.